the goal of this session is to show you how I constructed a payload to change the control flow uh, of the given binary. In fact, we are also given the corresponding C code to make the life easier to start with. Okay, let's dive, dive into the problem straight away. Um, we need to analyze the FMT2 binary and assign what they call flag. Uh, we need to come up with a payload that will trigger uh, the vulnerability and uh, upload the payload, that's all. All right, um, let's get into the problem and see the source code. Okay, here is the source code. Okay, you can scroll this, it's not the long code. Um, there is a main function, and there is an error checking function, there's an act function. So we are asked to call the act function, but the expected output is, wow, have a great safe interim. So the question is, who is calling act? Let's figure out. First question is, is anyone calling act? Yeah, main is calling act, but then in order to reach this particular line, uh, which says wow have a great safe printer. The status variable is used to decide is anybody updating the status variable? Of course not. And the status is a global variable assigned to zero. Okay, since zero is not greater than zero x FFF, the program will print only this message. You can quickly check that. It says requires an input. Okay. Ah, we got a message. Keep trying, don't give up. Okay, so how do we handle this problem? We have a global variable, we need to change the state. So let's find out whether we can exploit format string vulnerability inside this program. Where is it? Here it is. The main function takes the buffer from the user, as we can see here. It's copying the data into a local buffer. But this time, we may not have much luck with buffer overflow. Um, it's using a, st a, st a string and copy and limits the user input to 32 bytes. So it's not a good choice um in general so we need to look for other opportunities um the next line is interesting because it's printing whatever we feed in so let's try that let's see whether if we feed a we get back a yeah we get back a and if we feed percentage x we get some number from the stack this is how format string vulnerabilities work okay we can browse the stack that's good but we can't keep browsing like this because it will not accept inputs whose length is more than um, 32 bytes. So we need to use some powerful features of format string concept. For example, we, we can directly access a particular uh, position. Say, for example, in this case, um, this is the first x, second x, third x, and fourth x, right? We, what if we put directly a percentage uh, 4x, for example, percentage uh, 4 slash dollar x. Well, we can see it is showing us the fourth one here. Okay, so this is better because we don't have to feed in a large uh, data to, to browse the stack. Yeah, we can get this. So let's see how many inputs we have to give to, to reflect our own input. For example, let's try something like this. Four, it's not reflecting. Five, it's not reflecting. Six, not reflecting. Seven, not yet. Eight, no. Usually it will reflect uh, within a short uh, attempt. So it should be fine. We should be able to get there. Yeah, we got it in 11th attempt. So our own input AA8 is reflected here. That's why we are seeing 414141 in um, hex. Basically our format string uh, vulnerability um, is in action now. We can reach our own input, but this is the, the, the key concept we will exploit. Uh, however, so far we didn't write anything to memory. We were only reading it from memory, right? Um, format string actually has an interesting concept uh, that we can leverage to write into memory. Um, let me show you an example first. I put together this little toy example to show you an interesting feature of format string. For example, I'm printing high, hi. Hi means there are only two bytes. So we printed two bytes. Uh, that particular number can be stored in a local variable, say count here. And as you can see here, I am using percentage uh, n, which is a built-in uh, format string 
um, argument. The corresponding value should be a pointer. That's why I'm putting an ampersand here, ampersand count. So in the end, I'm going to print the count. We expect count to be two because we only printed H and I. Let's see what happens now. If we just compile this and then run this, we get count to be two. Okay, so we can leverage the percentage n capability and then we can change the state of the status variable. Okay, that's what we're going to do now. Okay, so we do know so far that we can reach the 11th argument, which will reflect our own input. So what if I replace this x by n? Oh, the program crashed. The reason it crashed, AAA was considered as an address, which is apparently not a valid address. That's, that's why it crashed. So if we feed in a good address, it should be able to uh, reach there and write uh, number four or whatever number of bytes that we are writing. Um, in this case, we are writing five bytes, right? Four A's followed by a minus. Um, it should be updating there at that particular location. So the location that we need to figure out is uh, where is the status uh, variable? What is the memory address of status variable? Okay, for that, we need to look into the disassembly of uh, our binary. So let's load into GDB quickly. Um, let's disassemble. First, let me select the disassembly flavor to AT&T syntax. And then we will disassemble the ACK function. All right, let's figure out the address of status variable. We can see the status variable is compared with 0xff in the source code. So let's see whether we can spot FF. Oh, this seems like that. FF, matching this FF. Uh, that means uh, we are comparing. CMP means compare. Compare against the AX register. Now figure out what is AX register. OK, here it is. So 804A02E must be the address of the status variable. OK, so we have gotten that. Now we are ready to go. We can just go to our, let's try this. What happens now? We have to say it in the reverse. Class X 2E, class X A0, class X 04, class X 08. Um, we need to be able to print this thing in, in uh, let's say, print in hex, because it's an address. And then we, we try now. Maybe my input was not formalized correctly. Um, maybe I made a small mistake. Give me a minute, please. Okay. I have my answer copied, so it's easier for me to just take it from there. Let me check what did I do. Minus dollar n. Oh, I, I forgot to put a f there. Print f. Okay. So it's still not working, at, but it's not crashing at least. Okay, let me clear the screen. It's not crashing. But it tells us that we were able to write something at this location. And our location is, is the correct location. So now we need to figure out how many bytes should we write at this location. We need at least uh, 255 bytes, uh, at least one more than 255, in fact, because it's greater than. So we need to write 256 bytes. So far, we only wrote five bytes, one, two, three, four, and, and the minus. So it means we only wrote five bytes. So how do we write 256 bytes? Um, I can leverage my syntax that I copied. There's an interesting feature, yet another format string vulnerability feature that we can leverage. We can print 250 spaces. Okay, let's now count how many space, how many characters are we printing. Four bytes from the address, and then the minus is a fifth byte, and then 250 spaces, so it's 256 so far. 255, and then a minus is 251, and then another minus 252, another four, 256. So we should be good to go now. You see here? Wow, have a great safe printer is printing. Okay, so it's it's as simple as this. Finding out the address that we would like to write, and then updating uh, particular variables with enough number of bytes using the format string capability that is called the percentage n feature. So we are leveraging percentage n feature, and then percentage u feature 
to, to generate 256 bytes that we need to update. In fact, status is declared as a local vari global variable. Um, let me check the data type here. It's unsigned sort integer, so we could actually use HN as well, and it should also work. So that's all. HN means print uh, only two bytes at a time. That's what HN means. I'm not going into all the details of how the stack is organized, uh, how format string vulnerability actually works, but you, you have seen here, um, if the program is actually um, taking a user input and directly printing it without a proper format string like percentage yes, percentage D, and so on, um, an evil user can actually send malicious small form data, for example, the data that we have seen here. Um, he's sending in, instead of AABBB, he's sending in some address, he's sending in um, the position of, on the stack to overwrite, uh, and he updates the um, global variables uh, value to a desired state, and then change the flow of control, because otherwise he, he will never be able to reach um, this particular statement, right? Nowhere in the code there is the uh, ACK has set to more than 255. In, in hex it is the FF. The reason why this is this is working is because the status variables um, status has been changed from zero to 256 in this case. Uh, that's pretty much it. Uh, if you wanted to know how to debug in GDB, you could actually uh, load it load this binary in GDB. Look at the status variables state before and after the exploit. And you can see for yourself the status has changed to 256 in this case. All right, that's all. Thank you very much.